Hey guys, Louis Lavoy here. Welcome to another Easy Paint. And we are going to paint florals today. And uh, this is something that I just, uh, I love to paint. I mean, even, even all those dinosaur paintings I paint, I always put flowers in there. So florals are, are, are fun to paint. So these ones I painted earlier. So they're, they're kind of abstract. If you look at it, it's a lot of abstract imagery in it with, uh, with some points of interest, which are the flowers. So that's kind of how this works. Here's another one. Very abstract. See, it kind of almost blends into my, my tarp in the back there. See how kind of random everything looks? Oops, I think it goes this way. So, I mean, they're fun. They're fun to paint, and uh, I'm going to show you how I do it, and we'll have a lot of fun doing it. So, first of all, you have to think of creating a random abstract piece of art. And to a lot of people, this is a lot harder than you think. And you have to kind of enjoy um, what I call a Zen way of thinking. You're just relaxed and, you, and you're looking for shapes and compositions and you're looking for um, you know, color values. It's, uh, it's very relaxing, very therapeutic, if I can use that word. Um, it's overused in the art world sometimes, therapeutic. It's art's very therapeutic. But um, to create these things, you don't have to think. That's what I like about it. You just have to, you know, think subconsciously. Like it's, it's in the back of your mind that's thinking. Okay, so first of all, there's, um, there's a lot of different types of flowers in the world and you can find lots of different references. I'm gonna focus on basically mm, two flowers. And using these two flowers, we, you should be able to create all kinds of varieties of flowers. Okay, so it's the rose, and the daisy, those are the two flowers we're gonna look at. Okay, so I'm gonna show you real quick. Okay, before I get started on, on giving you an example, this is my palette, so I'm using a lot of colors this time. And um, I mean, we got green because we're gonna put some leaves in. I got like a bright yellow, like a canary yellow. I got uh, yellow ochre. I got this red, I think it's crimson red. I have a uh, purple, I got a kind of a blue and then I got like a darker blue and I got black and white and I'm gonna mix all these colors together we're not gonna use any solid colors much we always mix them together so we're gonna start with this rose the rose shape okay so what I'm gonna do for that is I'm gonna mix um, a little bit of white or not sorry a little bit of red and some black together and we want a really dark kind of burgundy color. So you can use purple too. Purple, Purple's good with red for making burgundy colors. Okay, so for our rose, we're going to paint, basically you're gonna paint like a U, and then you're gonna fill it in like that. Okay, so it's basically, so if you think of, you think of a rose being quite red, so this, this dark color is gonna be kind of an under, undercolor of the red. So then we're just going to plop some, like I like to just get some nice brush strokes. See that's a, that's one of the petals, you know, roses are wrapped in, in petals. So I'm going to maybe pull it out a bit. So it's just starting, starting to open a bit. And then I'm going to do the same on this side. Just pull that down a bit. And then uh, it's already looking like a rose. Like you don't have to do much. I'm going to add some on top like that. That's it. That's all I would do. So this is like a dark rose. Keep it nice and dark. Now, of course, you can so take a little bit of the green, some yellow ochre, mix those together. I make my stem. It's going to be a bit of a. And I'm going to have a little thorn coming off here. And I don't know what these are, but they kind of grow off the edges of roses like that, like especially the stemmed roses. Those are the ones that people like to give for Valentine's gifts. Okay, so I'm gonna put a leaf right here. So with the leaf, it's just, just basically pull it down and then just make it pointy. And every flower has a unique leaf. And the rose flower, I think it's got these little jigs on the edge. So that's it. Basically, that's how I do a rose. Not much. 
Not much painting going on there, just a couple of lines. It's very subjective or suggestive, I mean. Okay, so the next flower I'm gonna look at is, is the daisy or, I mean, the daisy can, can you know, mask as a lot of different other type of flowers. But um, real quick, I'll show you. This is what you learn, and this is what a little kid learns in school. So I'm gonna take some green, some black, and we're gonna paint a white daisy with green and black, and I'll show you how that looks. So it's gonna be like that. It's the way a little kid would paint a daisy, just like little loops. So if I do this, it's like a four-leaf four leaf clover, and one more. All right, there you go. I'm just gonna get rid of all this color, all this white that's around it and make it all green. That's how easy a daisy is to paint. It's very easy. Now, the, the little yellow thing that's in the middle, it's called a, a sternum. And uh, that's what really sells it. That's a little too yellow with the white there. Okay, so that's where a little kid paints a daisy. And uh, of course you can make a stem. I'm just gonna see if I can scratch it on there. No, it doesn't work. Not on this. Let's see if I can remove paint. Sometimes removing paint's just as good. There, see I just took a little water and removed the paint. There. There you go, you got your little daisy. Let's see if it's... Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to paint a, a daisy with a little bit more dynamic um, range to it. So think of, think of this as being the, the shape of the flower. So it's, you know, it's like a, it's like a little, a little shallow bowl. See that? Now you can see all kinds of things. There's, there's like a, a, a highlight. See this little highlight here? There's a shadow right here. See the way the light's just catching right here? And um, I don't know. There's light right in here, and then there's shadow right. So this this bottom part's lighter than this top part. See the way it kind of catches all these. So sometimes studying a um, a bowl like this can give you that concave, like how a concave shape is. And I like my daisies to feel a little bit concave, as if the petals are growing around, like out. So using the bowl as a reference, I'm gonna use like, I'm gonna use some white. I'm gonna mix a little bit of this blue, just a touch of purple in it, okay? So it should give me a nice white kind of color. Oh, a little green got in, but that's fine. Okay, so here's my bowl. Just gonna, just gonna, if you can imagine this is the bowl shape, and then over here is, I'm gonna try to paint it as much like a bowl and then turn it into a daisy. Okay, so I've got too much paint going on on the canvas. I'm gonna wipe my brush. Just by wiping the brush, you can you now have a nice dry brush to kind of pick up all that. Okay, so there you go. This is kind of a, the same shape as that bowl. Okay, so I can take some pure white now. I'm going to now if there's light on this side, then there'll be light on that side, the bowl. Kind of the way light works. Okay, see that? It should look a little bit concaved. I'll just pull this up a bit. All right, there you go. I'll just blend this down a little dark. You want it really light. Now, the center of it is going to have that a little yellow sternum that goes right there. So there you go. It's more like a poppy kind of shape. But um, in order to stand out a little bit more, I'm going to paint the background, paint around it. Imagine there's all these big leaves around it. Okay, now taking this dark color, I'm gonna I'm gonna shape these into petals now. Just 
like that. And imagine there's a pedal right here. And there's a pedal right there kind of thing. And then there's a pedal right there. So just by doing that, you can kind of, you can kind of get a, more of a shape of pedals going on in there. Okay. Okay, so just taking these two flowers, we're gonna make a whole bouquet, kind of a, um, a crazy bouquet, like what I showed you earlier. I can't find those uh, samples. But anyways, let us, let's, let's begin. When it comes to abstract art, composition and color is everything. So, I'm just gonna, so I'm gonna use purple. Purple will be a nice color to show you. Okay, so we're gonna, our composition will be like, okay, threes are a good number for composition. So imagine these will be the three daisies. And there'll be the little sturum right there. And then we'll have little flowers over here, let's say. And then over here, imagine like, here's your vase. Okay, and then over here is going to be these roses kind of coming out. They're just kind of falling out because they're so big. And then we'll have like a little rose right there, like a medium-sized rose right there. We'll have a nice big one right here. Something over here, right? And then we'll have like, I don't know, a bunch of leaves, maybe a few more little daisies right there. So there's my composition. Maybe we'll have some, um, I don't know, something up here. Maybe like baby's breath by just putting white dots. Okay, so there, there's our, there's our plan for our, our bouquet. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna is we're gonna work hard to make something look like it was randomly created. Okay, so I'm gonna mix some black and some green together, and I'm gonna start filling in a lot of this here around the flower. Okay. All the stems coming out like this. See that drip that's running down? It's actually going to be one of those happy little accidents. I hope. It might be just an accident. Let's just do that. Okay. Now, I'm going to take some, some blue. The dark blue that I got, I'm just going to start putting it in there. More happy little accidents. Let's keep going. And because those flowers, these flowers are going to be red, this is part of my pre-planning, I want my composition to feel more balanced because it'll feel real heavy, like half red and half, you know, daisies or whatever. So I want some red on there too. So I'm going to put some red in my background. So in my background, it's going to help balance it a bit. Okay, so this is this is looking looking messy, no doubt. It's not looking it's not looking pretty. Like you don't want to hang this painting up. Okay, now I'm going to take some pure purple, just start placing it around like that. Another happy accident. It's following this accident. Okay. All right, the whole painting's a happy little accident. So now, what we're gonna do is remove some paint. So let's just get some water on there, and let's just start removing some of this paint. It's kind of like you have to destroy your art to make art. See this color, I love that. That's really looking good. And this red here, I want it to be more subtle. I don't want it to be so harsh. Try to move as much white as possible. Okay. Took a bit of effort to get to that, but that's probably not, not an accident. This is what I want. I want it to look... I want it to look like abstract. I want it to look like 
like this. I want it to look randomly done, like as if there's somehow this paint just got all over the place. Just by gesturing this kind of gives it some. Okay, now there's one color I want in there that isn't really in there. It's this kind of this kind of color. Color goes good with the purple. Okay. It's too much on top of the paint. Let's see if we can blend it off. There. There we go. Don't want that to happen, but Okay, the little drips aren't bad. I'm gonna make a few obvious ones. These aren't happy accidents. These are deliberate accidents. Okay, I guess Bob Ross has given us some terminology that we're now all using. Okay, now I'm gonna go right for my, my, my flowers. Now I'm gonna mix some white. It's pretty, it's pretty dark, the whole this whole surface, so you don't really need a lot. So I'm gonna have a little bit of blue and white, and I want that purpley color that was in that little sketch I did earlier. Just a, just a touch of it. Okay. And if it's too dark, it, it'll actually serve a better purpose. It's too light now, okay. There's my, kind of my under my bowl. Try to paint with natural light. So all the light that you're seeing in here is all light coming in from windows. Okay, so there's my... I like it. It's a little too cuppy, a little too much like a bowl right now. It's easier to make it less like a bowl afterwards. So there we go, there's my flowers. And then my rose, I'm gonna put that in that right now too. Sometimes you just gotta do this now because um, it kind of lifts up your spirits in your painting. Like when you get to this point, you're thinking, I don't know if my painting's working out. So by putting a few of these in now, ooh, this is really dark. So it doesn't really matter because roses can be Really dark. We make them consistent. Okay, so this is the open one. This will be the most open rose there is. Okay, and then this one over here, it's kind of like animation. It's falling down, falling down, and down, kind of thing. Do 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 do. And we'll put one right there. So it's it's really dark, but, but these are acrylics. So you can add light to it, and we're gonna. Um, we're gonna let this dry too. Okay. So that looks good. Something that this painting needs is something a little more random on it. And I'm gonna show you right now. We're gonna actually take the painting, we're gonna splatter paint all over the, the painting. And then we're gonna finish it off by putting flowers and uh, suggesting um, leaves and whatnot in there. Okay, so we're gonna take this off, take it off my easel, and I'm gonna set it on my tarp, and I'm gonna do this right now. Okay, so when it comes to splattering your paint, I'm gonna put my, my paint tray there. See, I got a little water in this little tray here, so you're gonna want some water when it comes to splattering. Okay, so I'm gonna, you know, I have no idea, this is just, what you do is you, you basically want it to kind of drip down, like see that? You want nice little round droplets of water. And by shaking it, it just shakes off the paint. Remember, it's it's pretty random, like it's hard to control this, but you can try to desire some some effects. I want it to splatter like that. So, just whacking it really hard sometimes helps. 
Sometimes you might have to use your hand and hold it there and do that. I'm just, it's a bit of a trial and error. Think of it like I'm going to be painting over most of this anyways. And we're going to wait for this to dry. It's dry now and um, I'm going to put in my flowers. So now there's like splatter all over it. So I'm going to have to bring it back, the flower, which is, I was kind of expecting this, doing this. So there I'm going to make the bottom part of the cup shape. I'm just going to put a little bit more white so it's whiter on top. And I'm just going to go for the petals. Now I notice my black isn't, these splatters aren't completely dry yet. So if you can imagine, there's my sternum, it's going to be this dot right here. So everything's got to come out of there. It's all going to come out. There's my sternum right there, so. And this one here, I'm going to make it look a little bit more flatter than this one. This one looks a little too cuppy. I feel like flowers need to look very random. If you make them look perfect, there'll be something looking wrong with your paint, overall painting. So I get this little thing where it's like, you got to work hard to make things look random. <laughs> I mean, it takes a lot of effort. Like a lot of times you look at something and think, oh, the artist just threw paint on there and then plopped these flowers on top there. And they probably did do that, but it took a lot of effort to get it like that. All right, so now I'm gonna take some green and I'm gonna put in some leaves around everything. So I'm gonna mix some white and yellow with my green. So I want my greens to look a little lighter because everything's dark. So then I can just pop them on top. And for leaves, I just make little triangular shapes like that. St some stems coming out. Maybe there's a big leaf right there. I don't know. Okay, so the other thing too, go with a little bit darker green for this one, is uh, this kind of leaf always reads nicely in paintings. A fern kind of leaf. So just by putting a little dashes like that and then go almost on the other side, same kind of dash, doot, doot. It reads like a fern, so a couple of ferns. Get rid of this purple by putting green on top of there. Get some green over here. Then there's always this, this leaf here, the one that's made up of three. So I just put one, two, and then one right in the middle. That makes three. Like that. Just by dapping around it like that, feels like leaves. A lot of times uh, when you do a kind of a organic and random feeling, loose, you want it feeling loose, you don't want it feeling like, you want to make it look like you took very little effort in this painting, like you just, it was just, paint just fell on those places. Even though it's very rare that a lot of these um, abstract paintings are done like that. There's a lot of effort and skill involved in creating something looking looking like it just fell fell together. So I'm going to go in there with some really dark green. I'm just going to try to shape these leaves a little bit more. Just to give them a little more. And I'm going to go around my flower a little bit like that. We are going to add more to the flower. It's not these flowers aren't quite done yet. Sometimes just sharpening one edge there like that could be just enough to sell that flower. I'm gonna pull some like some weird branches coming out. This should have more of a Okay. This is partly, this is all out of my imagination, but it's partly from studying flowers. 
and studying plants and looking at them and, and pulling what you like. Like for me, there's things that I like about plants that other people might not like. And one of the things I really like is I like the wildness of plants. Like I like gardens that are a little bit more wild looking than gardens that are totally manicured. So because I like that, I like to put that in my paintings. Okay, so I'm gonna put like, I don't know, something like a little baby's breath up in there, okay? So if you can imagine, so I'm gonna darken this a bit more so that whatever that baby's breath, I have no idea what it's gonna look like. It's gonna just be white up there, just to kind of, I want it to feel like there's this light area, this dark area. And this here, I'm gonna block out some of the background, okay? So let's do that first. Let's block out that background. Now I'm gonna, Go with kind of that yellowy color that I got going up here. I'm gonna start putting it in between this purple. I'm not gonna to do too much of it. Like I really like this. Let's just see if I kind of make this leaf look a little bit more. Make it stand out a bit more. Okay. I'm gonna take this and bring this down here. Same with this, by just doing this, you can take rid of, get rid of all this stuff here. It's gonna make the bouquet feel like it's hanging here. Now taking this color, the same color, I'm gonna put, pop, punch a hole right here. So I'm imagining a blue vase here, so here's my blue vase. I'm just gonna punch little holes into, the, into this random stuff right here, just by going in with this color here. This purple right here. Okay. It's looking good. Okay, so let's a little bit more. Go around your shape sometimes. Just go around it a little bit like that. See how it brings that out a little bit? I don't know if I like that. But there. Okay, so I'm imagining that this has um, this flower here. It's on its own kind of thing. I want some of those back, I'm calling it background color. It's just, if you think of abstract, it's just color again, right? And just to kind of give it some balance, I'm just gonna throw a little color, a little bit of this same color that's going on over there, over here, somehow it'll balance it a bit. You don't want it feeling like it's, your painting's cut in half. You want it to feel like it's all done by the same, the same day. Okay, so it's starting to look like, um, like a bouquet. So we are going to work on these little flowers a bit more. Now I'm gonna make more, make this a little bit more on the purpley side. I'm gonna throw some flowers in, just, okay, so this is where the baby's breath stuff, it's gonna go right up in here. And um, while it's wet, I'm gonna just put some white on top of it. Make it look a little bit more circular, like little dots. Put a rogue one that just got away from the bunch right there. A couple of rogues. Okay, so get my, I want to have some more. I don't know. Maybe they just kind of they're falling. These little little. Okay, so these ones over here. These are like little, little flowers. Okay, let's let that kind of dry a little bit. You know, what you do is you revisit all this stuff later. And you just see if it needs a little more work or not. And put a little flower right there. So, I don't know, maybe on this side of the vase is a bunch of flowers. Just growing. Put one right here just for just for fun. 
just whatever that is, is there. Okay, now what's gonna make these look like flowers is that yellow sternum that goes in the middle here. Let's put that in the middle, that in the middle. Let's put that in the middle of these little guys too. There's one more right here. Okay, we're gonna let that kind of dry up a little bit. And what I'm going to do is build a, build a, sh a dark shadow on my vase. That's right here. Now what you're doing is, is you're suggesting a vase. Like don't sit there and try to create this, this detailed vase, just suggest it. But people don't even have to see it right away. They can go, they can later on like see it in their, in the, in their mind's eye, like, oh, I didn't see that, but I guess that's a vase behind there, or something that the flowers are in. So just feel free to create a few happy little accidents, like, whoa, that wasn't how, it's not an accident when you create it, though. Okay. Maybe that's part of the glazing of this, the ceramic on the vase, I don't know. Okay, so, now I'm gonna work on my rose. These roses actually don't, I actually kind of like them dark like this, but I'm gonna do it just to, for the sake of showing you how to create nice roses without a lot of effort. So think of the light always hitting the front face of the rose that opens up. So I just fill in with, like it's, it's kind of like a, um, like a mandala. When you look at a rose, it gets smaller and smaller and there's more detail in the middle. And it's a lot of times it's brighter too. The, if it's a dark rose, the nice brightness is in the middle. I like this one. I like the way it just kind of happened. It's not quite open yet. And this one's definitely not open. These ones are still closed kind of thing. Okay, so I'm gonna imagine there's also a rose behind all this stuff. I'm just gonna put in some of this hard red right there. It's, you can't really make it out. It's like it's behind all the, all this organic stuff, these leaves and that. There's something red back there. We don't quite know what it is. They look like red dots. It could be red little, I don't know, little flowers sitting on, on the front of everything too. Who knows what it is? It's one of those things, like sometimes it's good to put things in that you don't know what it is. Even though you're the creator of this thing, you can easily say, I don't know what that is, but it looks good there. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with a little bit more green. I hope this doesn't drive you crazy. This is the way I paint. I, I go, I'm actually letting things dry while I do other things. It's just a way of, having a little economy in your painting. Okay, so. Just, I just want this one side of these leaves to be lighter than, other, than the other side. Not too much, just enough. Make this. This leaf here should be Just like you got dark lines, you're gonna have some light lines. Some of the branches are lighter than, than, the, than the shapes. Okay, I need something really strong in there right now. So I'm gonna go with, um, just a couple of strong, lines okay I like this this is coming together nicely okay often squint and look at it with your with your eyes squinting if something looks like 
like, like this bottom part I don't like right now and same with up in here. So that's just by squinting. So I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with some purpley color. This purple I like, I'm just gonna feel like I can try to extend it a bit. This is the part that you, you know, you make all the decisions. You say, well, I like this, I don't like that. That's the right way to paint. The wrong way to paint is to say, is, am I doing it right? Is this the way it's supposed to look? Like you gotta be the one to, to, to know if this is the way it should look. And this is part of, uh, I think the therapy of art is where you feel just for a moment in control of nature control of this randomness that's happening you got a little bit of control and it might make you feel empowered I don't know sometimes sometimes it has the opposite effect it makes you feel not empowered it makes you feel vulnerable that there's something else greater in this world that's in control I tend to lean towards that I tend to look at all the mistakes that are happening that I honestly had no control over and I like it. But I have to be the one to make that decision that I like it. I like the way that looked. And if I like it, I'm leaving it in. And then when you do enough art and do enough painting, then you'll hear other people say, I like the way you did that. Truth is, I didn't do that. That just happened. Okay, so I'm just gonna go with some yellow now. Just, I don't know why, I just feel like it needs, that yellow just keeps coming out green. Got the yellow. I just feel like if I just throw in some yellow right in here, I've got to be careful about this little flower that's deliberately there. Okay, it's about done. We are going to add our highlights now. This is the fun part. This is the, this is the part most artists kind of wait to do. Is there are highlights on their painting. I just, I'm just going to bring this out right here. feel more round. I like this dark circle there with the light there. It just feels like there's a petal that's just up a little bit. I'm not going to do the same with this because I want it to feel like a totally different flower. I don't want it feeling like, like you bought these flowers and they're all the, they're all the same. They were made in a factory. You know what I'm looking like? They're grown. They're like, they're like um, snowflakes. Everyone is very unique. No two flowers are the same. I'm just feeling my way through this. It's it's weird, like I use the word feeling when I'm painting. I don't use the word, I'm just seeing my way through it. I'm just visually looking for the way through it. It's a, it feels like it's a feeling, like you gotta, hmm, that feels right to put that there. Okay, I think this is good. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a bit more to my to my daisy. Just to, I just want these little sternums to be a little bit more yellow. So by putting white on there and then putting the yellow on top of that, it'll feel more like a highlight. Put a few random ones. What the heck? Just a few random dots. I don't know what this yellow thing is, but it feels like a type of plant thing. Let's just go like that. Okay. All right. This flower looks like it could use a little more love. Let's put a little, ooh, that little yellow that got in there looks good too. There we go. Didn't, wasn't meaning that color to go in there, but I think it works. I'm gonna put a little bit down there. Some there. Okay, let's just finish this sucker up and we'll call it a day. 
Okay, so that looks too controlled. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you the next little trick is um, of highlighting your random painting is to get some random sp speckles in there. Um, paint, so I'm gonna just flick some paint on there. And what I'm gonna do is use my finger to tap it. It's not working. Need a little more water, I think. Okay. There, I'm gonna get some down here too. Just in these dark areas. A little bit right there won't hurt. There. Okay, so and then I'm gonna just Take my finger, smudge this down like this is on the vase. Put a little highlight there, there. Okay, and there we go. I think we're done. I think this is this is good. We'll call it um, we'll call it finished. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed doing this. I know I was all uptight when I started, and now I feel completely relaxed. The painting somehow allowed me to feel like I was in control of uh, everything that wasn't controlling my life right now. But um, anyways, this is uh, uh, an enjoyable way to paint, and I hope, uh, hope you try different things. You could do all kinds of things. And we're gonna be using the same splattering technique and. Mm -hmm randomness and abstract in other things like you can do this in a hairdo even so i don't know how does that look as a hairdo not bad i'm lewis lavoy join us next thursday thank you very much